Hi everyone! Last week I finished a new project and it turned my workshop into total chaos. Now this is nothing special really, it happens basically with every project I do. But I guess there's no way around it, it's just thermodynamics, because when you do work, entropy must go up, right? Anyway, after a few days of sawing, milling and drilling, the dust has finally settled. And if you've seen some of my previous videos, you might think, Dude, how are you ever going to do any serious photolithography in that place? Well, here's some good news. My latest project involved the making of... A small clean room space. Now before I show you how I build it, just a short note on clean rooms and their classifications. Now, as you can see here, there are tremendous differences between the number of airborne particles in, for example, plain room air and a high-end clean room. For a class 1 clean room, the difference is even a factor of a million. Now, of course, you don't get to this level of cleanliness with an enclosure and a filter. Uh, you would have to be a little more rigorous than that and exclude every possible cause for particle contamination. So I'm not expecting to get anywhere near as good as a class 1, but maybe class 10,000 or 1,000. Anyway, that would already be a huge improvement over the current situation. There is also another intended purpose for this cupboard, and that is to be able to work safely with, for example, concentrated hydrogen fluoride solutions, which I want to use for etching glass. Now, as a chemist, I'm quite aware of the dangers of HF. And in fact, I know personally of a case of poisoning by HF gas in a lab I used to work. And this incident actually led to the death of the student involved, uh, not immediately, but after about 12 hours. So, to prevent reenactment of this event, I'd rather keep things safe, especially since I work mostly alone in my workshop. Here's a schematic of the cupboard. Basically, the whole idea is that you continuously fill a box with filtered clean air. So, a fan blows air through a so-called high-efficiency particulate air filter, or HEPA filter for short, and it's basically a folded filter sheet with a very large surface and it can filter out a large portion of the particles in air. As a basis for this project, I used a HEPA filter and a fan that came from an auction lot with some clean room equipment. And here's a photo of the label of the filter. And as you can see, the efficiency is indicated to be 99.9995%. But what does this mean? Well, the classification EN uh, 1822 means that the indicated efficiency is referring to particles larger than 0.3 microns. So of every million particles larger than 0.3 micron, only 5 will pass the filter. So that's pretty impressive. And let's hope that the filter still delivers some of this uh, initial performance. Now the idea is to use this filter to create a laminar flow of clean air inside a box by blowing the air through the HEPA filter from above. And by keeping the volume inside at a slight overpressure with respect to the surroundings, only clean air is flowing out and no dirty air can come in. However, since the secondary requirement of the cupboard is to allow for working with uh, tricky substances, you can't just blow in clean air, right? Because it would blow the hazardous gas right into your face. So you need an additional exhaust, but if the exhaust is working too hard, you will suck in dirty air into the cupboard, which is also undesired. But on the other hand, if it's not working hard enough, you still risk contact with the hazardous substance. Now, the solution to this is to add a small compartment where you can place the dangerous etchants and which is connected to the exhaust and which is at a slight under pressure with respect to the main volume of the cupboard. So now we can create an overpressure in the general work area while at the same time creating an airflow that does not allow for etchant fumes to go back into the main volume and leave the box. I based my design on generic 6 mm thick Trespa or Keykern plate material. And this material is chemically inert, it's temperature resistant and it is non-flammable. In addition, it has a very hard and scratch resistant coating, which uh, is easy to clean and uh, does not release particles. And this material comes in plates of about 122 centimeters wide, so about uh, 48 inches. 
And that's why I decided to use exactly this dimension for the width of the box. Basically to limit the amount of waste material because uh, it's kind of expensive, about 40 euros per square meter. Also, I could just ask the supplier to cut it into strips of the required width, so uh, that saved me a lot of work. The plates were mounted together using aluminum L-profiles on the outside of the box using stainless steel M4 screws. And these screws were tapped directly into the trash pack, connecting everything firmly together. Now, by placing the aluminum strips on the outside, they cannot get into direct contact with, for example, the acidic etching fumes, which can corrode the aluminum. On the inside of the box, the corners were sealed using silicone kit. And in fact, the construction itself is in essence straightforward. So I'm not going to elaborate too much on this. Due to some space limitations on the back of the cupboard, I had to place the exhaust on one of the end sides of the box. And this could easily lead to a pressure gradient over the exhaust surface, which is undesirable. So to prevent this gradient, the size and the number of holes in the exhaust plate was limited, which created a flow resistance between the workspace and the exhaust space below. And since the flow resistance inside the exhaust volume itself is actually very small compared to the resistance between the main volume and the exhaust, you only have a small pressure gradient. By the way, in the exhaust compartment I also added a tube to distribute the vacuum more uniformly over the complete width of the cupboard. The front window was made out of 4 mm thick polycarbonate, which was actually the most expensive item of the construction. It cost about 100 euros. Now these plates are actually in short supply right now because of the high demand for COVID protection shields. The polycarbonate front plate was divided in two parts that can be individually removed for either better accessibility or better dust protection. One thing which is particularly important is good lighting inside the box. If only because it makes it easier to see dirt on for example surfaces. Now, For this reason I made two holes in the top of the cupboard that can hold very bright 10 watt LED light sources. And I closed off the holes using the polycarbonate discs that were left over from the holes in the front access plate. And by placing color filters under the LED lights, it's easy to filter out, for example, UV light. And this allows working with light sensitive materials such as photoresists inside the box. And if needed, it's also possible to use a red filter if, for example, a substance is light sensitive to a green light. To accurately control the inflow of air, I used an external frequency inverter that can regulate the fan speed. By the way, if someone knows an easy way to get rid of the high-pitched sound that these inverters generally make, let me know. Uh, it's not bad, but it's a bit annoying. So, for the exhaust, I just used the central vent of the workshop. The etching compartment I referred to earlier is actually just a standard polypropylene plastic container because this material is chemically resistant to both strong solvents like acetone and also to strong acids. Now, a narrow slit in the lid allows for safe access from the top while the holes in the bottom make the connection with the exhaust volume. And these holes don't need to line up with the holes in the bottom plate because of the spacers present on the container. I made sure that the etching compartment is indeed at a lower pressure than the rest of the working space by using uh, the pressure sensor of a smartphone. And the one I have is very sensitive, it can detect pressure differences as low as uh, 0 0.01 millibar, so a hundredth of a millibar. Since I do not own a particle counter, I have not been able to measure anything yet regarding the cleanliness of the air inside the box, but I'm definitely planning to do this in the future. So hopefully this cupboard will improve the quality of the photolithography results. And as you can see, uh, the wafer stepper itself is still outside the cupboard. And it's also temporarily suffering from the elevated entropy levels. It would actually fit inside easily, but that would eat up a lot of workspace. So my plan is to make a separate downflow hood for this tool itself. And this hood can be much simpler since it does not require an exhaust. So that's it for this video. The subject is a bit different from the previous videos, but 
I hope that the info is still useful to some of you.